Beyonce is one of those music artists who is so iconic, she only needs one name. <laughs> but of course she has many nicknames as well. Queen Bey has been dominating the charts since she was 17 years old and singing with Destiny's Child. With three successful group albums and three hit solo albums, Sasha Fierce is just getting started. She's had number one hits, gone on tour, gotten married, had a kid, been on SNL, been spoofed on SNL, surprise released an album, performed in multiple Super Bowl commercials, and even performed with Prince at the Grammys. And she's still going strong with her latest album, Lemonade. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Lauren Mayhew, and we're here to tell you all the deets on Queen Bey and her rise to the music throne. And we'll also show you the best Beyonce impressions in our lightning round. So get ready because Mike Drop is counting down the 107 music facts about Beyonce. Let's do this. Fact number one. Beyonce Giselle Knowles was born on September 4th, 1981 in Houston, Texas. Fact number two. B was born in the third ward of Houston. There are six in the city. The third ward became Houston's main African American community in the 1970s. Beyonce dressed as a third ward beauty pageant queen in her music video for Pretty Hurts. And it's also the reason Beyonce often throws up this sign. The singer is definitely proud of her roots. Fact number three. Her name is an homage to her mother Tina's maiden name, Beyonce, which is a Creole last name. Number four. Beyonce's father, Matthew Knowles, was a Xerox sales manager, and her mother owned a successful hair salon in Houston. They are essential to the singer's path to superstardom. Fact number five. Beyonce was a born entertainer. She first realized she wanted to be a singer at age five after attending a Michael Jackson concert. Fact number six. At age of seven, she won her first talent show by singing John Lennon's Imagine. She received a standing ovation. Fact number seven. Beyonce's singing ability was discovered when she was eight years old. When her dance teacher was singing a song in class, Queen Bey finished it by hitting all the high notes. The teacher became her mentor and coached her to victory in over 30 singing and dancing contests in and around Houston. Fact number eight. That same year, she also met future Destiny's Child members Kelly Rowland and Latavia Robertson in an audition. They were placed with three other girls as part of the girl group, Girls Time. There were about 50 other girls who auditioned for the group. Fact number nine. Girls' Time performed at banquets, backyard parties, and her mom's hair salon. Beyonce's mom would also design the attire for the girls' performances. Fact number 10. Kelly became best friends with Bay, and they even lived together for a while after Kelly's single mom could not properly take care of Roland. Fact number 11. Girls' Time appeared on Star Search in 1992. They lost, but their talent was obvious to anyone watching. Beyonce's dad quit his job to manage the group full time. Fact number 12. Matthew Knowles used to make Beyonce sing while running a mile in order to build her endurance. That explains all the energy that she brings to her performances. Fact number 13. Always the businesswoman, Beyonce would charge house guests $5 to watch her perform at her parents' house. Fact number 14. If you can imagine it, Queen Bey was teased growing up. She got called Dumbo for having large ears, got teased for being a chubby kid, and was so worried that other girls would cut off her hair that she wore it in a bun for the first six months of middle school. Fact number 15. When girls' time ended, the girls reorganized several times. They tried new members and many new names, including Something Fresh, Borderline, Cliché, The Dolls, and Destiny. The girls were so private about the group that Beyonce didn't even tell her long-term boyfriend at the time that she was a performer. They felt their music was very personal and that it was nobody's business but their own. Fact number 16. While they hunted for a record deal, the group changed their name to Destiny's Child after a passage from the Bible's book of Isaiah. Fact number 17. After group member Tamar Davis left Destiny's Child, they became an official quartet and were asked to record the song Killing Time for the Men in Black movie soundtrack in 1997. Fact number 18. When Bay was 14, Destiny's Child signed with Silent Partner Productions under the umbrella of Electra Records. The four girls moved to Atlanta, where Silent Partner was based, and studied with a tutor in the mornings while spending the rest of their day in the recording studio. Unfortunately, the deal with the lecture was short-lived and was just a little taste of a career, as Bay called it. Fact number 19. Their self-titled debut album took two years to finish, but it included one of the hottest hip-hop producers at the time, Wyclef Jean. Number 20. The first single off Destiny's Child was No No No, and it sold more than 3 million copies, making it certified gold. However, many people were confused about whether they were an R&B or hip hop group, and Beyonce later said that the album was a bit too mature for 15 year olds to tackle. Fact number 21. Their album The Writings on the Wall was released in 1999. The record blew up with hits like Bills Bills Bills, Bugaboo, Say My Name, and Jumpin Jumpin. The album was also Beyonce's first serious attempt at writing and producing. Fact number 22. Though 1999 brought them major success, it also brought major problems. Group members Latoya Luckett and Latavia Robertson left Destiny's Child, causing a whole bunch of rumors and drama. 
The media pitted them against Kelly and Bay, saying that they left because the group is all about Beyonce and that her father Matthew did not treat them fairly. They then filed a lawsuit against Matthew and the group, but luckily they reached a settlement after a few months, which included the agreement to stop bashing each other in public. Fact number 23. Michelle Williams and Farrah Franklin joined Destiny's Child in 2000, and the group was back on track. Unfortunately, Farrah left the group after just five months and during a publicity tour. Yikes. The media blew up again, of course. Fact number 24. Beyonce felt blamed for all the member changes and went through a depression as a result of the stress. But of course, like the professional she is, she eventually pulled herself up by her heel straps and continued to work hard. And sure enough, the group soon got asked to record a theme song for the new Charlie's Angels movie. That song, Independent Woman Part 1, topped the Billboard Hot 100 for 11 weeks. Fact number 25. Destiny's Child first hit the stage as a trio at the Australian concert that year and eventually became the opening acts for many hit artists like Christina Aguilera and TLC. Fact number 26. They teamed up with Solange Knowles, Beyonce's little sister, to record the theme song for Disney Channel's The Proud Family in 2001. Solange sang the lead and the group was on backup vocals. Fact number 27. The group continued to work hard on recording their next album and released their first single, Survivor, shortly before the album came out. Beyonce took leadership reins on this one, writing many songs for it and producing some as well. The album, Survivor, went on to sell over 4 million copies. Fact number 28. The song, Survivor, was actually inspired by a survival of the fittest joke that a radio DJ made about Destiny's Child members' issues. But Queen Bey took that negative comment and turned it into a positive female empowerment track. Fact number 29. While recording their Survivor album, Beyonce landed her first major acting role as the lead in MTV's Carmen, a hip hopera, starring alongside Mackay Pfeiffer. Fact number 30. The next single off Survivor was Bootylicious, which became another huge hit for the group and topped the Billboard Hot 100. It was Destiny's Child fourth number one and became such a hit that the Oxford Dictionary officially added the word Bootylicious to their dictionary in 2006. Fact number 31. That year, Beyonce was named Songwriter of the Year by the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, also known as ASCAP, for writing Jumpin' Jumpin', Independent Women Part 1, and Survivor. She was the first black woman ever to win this award, and the second woman overall to get it. Fact number 32. In 2002, Beyonce starred opposite Mike Myers in Goldmember, the third film of the successful Austin Powers trilogy. Her role as Foxy Cleopatra was her first time on the big screen, and she also did her first solo song called Work It Out for the movie's soundtrack. Fact number 33. Later that year, Beyonce was named the new face of Pepsi, replacing Britney Spears as its spokesperson. Fact number 34. Beyonce received more recognition as a solo artist when she was featured on Jay-Z's single, 03 Bonnie and Clyde, which had Prince and Kanye West as two of the song's many composers. Bay and Jay-Z's collaboration sparked rumors everywhere. The two were dating. Fact number 35. Beyonce's first solo album, Dangerously in Love, was released in 2003 and was a huge success reaching number one on the Billboard charts. It has sold over 5 million copies in the US and is Beyonce's best-selling solo album. Fact number 36. Beyonce said that working separately from Destiny's Child was therapeutic and liberating because she had more creative freedom and was able to give every song a personal touch. Fact number 37. Her first single, Crazy in Love, almost didn't happen. Beyonce didn't love the horn bass sample created by producer Rich Harrison because it seemed too old school for her. Luckily, Bay warmed up to it and ended up making it her first release. Fact number 38. Dangerously in Love won five Grammy Awards that year. Best Contemporary R&B Album, Best R&B Song, Best Rap Sung Collaboration, Best R&B Female Performance, and Best R&B Performance by a Group or Duo for The Closer I Get to You with Luther Vandross. Fact number 39. In 2003, Beyonce created her alter ego, Sasha Fierce, to help her get over her stage fright. Say what? Yep, Queen Bey would get shy about performing. Fact number 40. In 2004, Beyonce shocked everyone when she reunited with Destiny's Child to record another album. Fans were excited for the new record, but also sad to hear their announcement that it would be the group's final album together. Destiny Fulfilled was released in the fall of 2004 and spun out the hit singles Lose My Breath and Soldier. Fact number 41. Returning to the big screen, Beyonce starred opposite Jennifer Hudson, Jamie Foxx, and Eddie Murphy in Dreamgirls, which was adapted from the hit Broadway musical. Beyonce played the role of Dina, fulfilling her childhood dream of playing the show's lead, which she wanted to do ever since she was 15 years old. Fact number 42. Beyonce trained with an acting coach, lost 20 pounds, and did daily emotional journaling to prepare for the role. Looks like it paid off because Bay was nominated for two Golden Globes, one for Best Actress and one for her song Listen for the soundtrack, which received an Oscar nomination as well. Fact number 43. Once production on Dreamgirls wrapped, Beyonce rushed back to the studio to put together her next solo album. She snuck in and recorded it in two weeks while she was supposed to be on vacation. She often worked 14-hour days with her collaborators on the album. 
Fact number 44. Beyonce co-wrote and co-produced the album's 11 songs with the help of an all-star team which included Swizz Beats, Rich Harrison, The Neptunes, Sean Garrett, Stargate, Jay-Z, Solange Knowles, her cousin Angela Bience, Makiba, and Rodney Jerkins. She called it B-Day. Fact number 45. Beyonce worked with her co-writers Angela Bience, Makiba, and Solange Knowles in a separate room from the producers. She would run from room to room dropping good-natured jabs at each producer to make them work harder. She was happy there was no drama and said, The process was magical. Everyone was truly excited to be in the studio, just getting to be creative. Fact number 46. Her number one hit from the album Irreplaceable was written by singer Neo, who originally wrote it for himself. He said the track made him realize that men and women aren't as different from each other as he once thought but he ended up giving it to Beyonce because he realized that if a man sings that song, it comes across a little misogynistic and a little bit mean. Fact number 47. Bobby Roche, the model in the Irreplaceable video, said that on the 12-hour shoot, they were supposed to film a bedroom scene with him and Bay, but it never happened. He bragged that if they would have had the bedroom scene, it would have been something to talk about, something they would never forget. Probably why they didn't film it. Number 48. In 2007, Beyonce was chosen to be on the cover of Sports Illustrated's famous swimsuit issue. She was the second black woman to do it, the first being Tyra Banks, and Bay was the first cover girl who was neither a model nor an athlete. Fact number 49. During her 2007 world tour, Queen Bay started being backed up by an all-female band chosen through a nationwide audition. Fact number 50. She then outdid herself and cranked out eight music videos in two weeks for the DVD version of her album titled B-Day Anthology Video Album. Fact number 51. In 2008, Beyonce married Jay-Z in a private ceremony, which they were very secretive about to the media. Many people are surprised to learn that Jay-Z and Beyonce didn't immediately date after they met. The two spoke on the phone for over a year before Jay got enough courage to ask her out. Fact number 52. Beyonce said she's only had two boyfriends, one from the age of 13 to 17 and then Jay-Z. Bay said, I've always been very loyal and a little more mature. That was my only experience with a guy, and since then, I've only had one other boyfriend in my life. Jay. Time for the lightning round, people. So, Beyonce's music and dance moves have had such an impact on the world that people everywhere have been doing B impersonations for years. Here's a look at some of the best and most memorable Beyonce impersonations. Number 53. Shannon Tatum rocked that dance floor and the fashion floor on Lip Sync Battle when he performed Bay's song Run the World in a full Beyonce costume. I'm talking wig and all. <laughs> but the best part of the performance, besides his spot on impression, was when Queen Bay herself appeared and joined the dance. Fierce and fun. Number 54. After the 2016 Super Bowl, Katie Holmes talked about Beyonce's halftime performance on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, and then did her best impression of these dance moves and hair flips. Uh, need a dancer, Bay? Number 55. Former Saturday Night Live cast member Maya Rudolph is known for playing Beyonce in sketches, and even returned for the season finale in 2014 to play the singer after the famous Solange spat video surfaced. Now, she also played Bay when she hosted in 2012 in a sketch about Baby Blue Ivy that was full of guest cameos, including Kristen Wiig as Taylor Swift and Justin Timberlake as Bon Iver. Number 56. And who can forget JT's part in the SNL single ladies bit back in 2008? It features him, Andy Samberg, and Bobby Monaghan being the backup dancers for Beyonce's single ladies music video. Okay, so besides being hysterically funny, Justin Timberlake showed his dancing skills when he effortlessly got the moves down. Air high five. You know, that is before he humped Bay. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious and totally spot on. Number 57. Comedian Sashir Zamata joined the cast of SNL in 2014 and began playing Beyonce on the show. She even did a hilarious sketch about Beyonce trying to change Blue Ivy's diaper. Hey, being a mom is not easy. So I've heard. <laughs> Number 58. In 2015, Nicki Minaj joined in on the fun and played Beyonce on the SNL episode with James Franco. They performed a hip hop nativity play with Beyonce as the Virgin Mary, and Nicki played Bay as the Holy Mother. Nicki did giggle a few times at her hubby Joseph, played by Justin Bieber, played by Kate McKinnon. I know, it's confusing, but super funny. <laughs> Number 59. Even actor Benedict Cumberbatch tried his best to do the Beyonce walk on the Graham Norton show in 2014. Not sure this one was nailed, but it was still pretty entertaining. Number 60. Former NBA player Shaquille O'Neal lip synced to Beyonce's Sweet Dreams one year on Halloween as he was dressed in drag. We're guessing he's a big fan of Bay, considering he also posted a video of himself singing along with her song Halo at the Super Bowl halftime show in 2013. <laughs> 
I'd love to see that. Number 61. Beyonce is such a hit. I mean, she's even being spoofed in Japan. On this Japanese TV show, comedian Yoshio Kojima dressed as Beyonce and performed Crazy in Love. He may have chosen his own dance moves for the song, but it was still a nod to the queen. Number 62. Nothing can beat a Japanese comedian being Beyonce, except a dog being her. After Drunken Love became a hit, hundreds of videos using the song popped up on YouTube, including this dancing dog that went viral. Humans, animals, we all want to be like Bay. Well guys, that's the end of the lightning round. Which impression was your favorite? Did we miss any? Because if so, why don't you guys do an impression and post it below for us? I would love to see it. Comment below and let us know. Okay, back to the facts. Fact number 63. In 2008, Beyonce came out with her third album, I Am Sasha Fierce. The album scored Beyonce two big hits, Single Ladies and If I Were a Boy, plus a collaboration with pop star Lady Gaga. Fact number 64. Beyonce wrote a letter to her fans describing her excitement for the album. She wrote, I have poured my heart and soul into it. It is my baby. It is the most time I have spent on any project since my first records as a member of Destiny's Child when I was 15 years old. Fact number 65. Bay recorded 70 songs over 8 months, but only 17 lucky ones made it into the album. Some influences for the album were her husband Jay-Z and playing Etta James in the movie Cadillac Records. Fact number 66. The album hit number 1 on the Billboard 200 in its first week, and it was her third album in a row to do so. Eventually, it became one of the top 10 albums sold that year, which is Beyonce's fifth time reaching the top 10 between Destiny's Child and her solo efforts. She is one of the four artists to achieve this, along with Garth Brooks, Shania Twain, and Mariah Carey. Go Bay. Fact number 67. Beyonce was dedicated to her role in Cadillac Records. She gained 20 pounds and dotted her arms with track marks to correctly portray legendary R&B singer Etta James, who struggled with a heroin addiction. Beyonce spent a few days at the Phoenix House, a rehab center in Brooklyn, to get a better understanding of the emotions of recovering drug users, since Bay has never tried drugs. Fact number 68. To prepare for the role, Beyonce read and watched everything about Etta that she could, including her book. Bay said, I wanted to make it real. But during the filming, you couldn't talk to me. I'm a very happy person, so to be in such a painful place, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. When filming wrapped, Beyonce felt inspired and wrote the singles, If I Were a Boy and That's Why You're Beautiful. Fact number 69. Beyonce donated her entire salary from Cadillac Records to charity. It went to the Phoenix House, the chain of rehab centers for heroin addicts around the country that Bay had visited for the role. Fact number 70. Singer-songwriter The Dream came up with the idea for Single Ladies, which was recorded after Beyonce secretly married Jay-Z. The Dream got the idea after Beyonce came into the studio and didn't have a ring on in an attempt to hide the marriage. So, having secrets can be good. Fact number 71. Single Ladies spawned a massive dance craze, hundreds of YouTube tributes, and the hilarious SNL skit with JT. The famous moves were choreographed by Frank Gatson Jr. and Jaquel Knight. Fact number 72. Jaquel Knight said B wanted it to feel good and powerful, and she wanted something that everyone would do. The inspiration for the dance came from a performance of Mexican Breakfast on The Ed Sullivan Show in 1969, as well as Shirley MacLaine's dancing in the musical film Sweet Charity, which is the reason why Beyonce ran up the wall in the video. Fact number 73. The leotard costumes were created by her designer mother, Tina Knowles, who based it off the leotards in a chorus line in All That Jazz, but gave it a modern twist. And no one can forget that $5 million Lorraine Schwartz wedding ring. It's easy to see why single ladies became an instant classic. Fact number 74. I Am Sasha Fierce was nominated for 10 Grammy Awards in 2010, including Album of the Year and Record of the Year. Beyonce won six Grammys that night, including Song of the Year for Single Ladies, making her the only female artist to achieve that many wins in a single night. Fact number 75. Beyonce took a much-deserved six-month hiatus from music after that, but she couldn't leave her music love for too long. She released a new studio album in June of 2011. Fact number 76. The album entitled Four was leaked three weeks ahead of schedule on June 28th. Bay was not happy it leaked, but stated that she was happy her fans enjoyed the album. Her lead single, Run the World Girls, was a worldwide hit and won the award for Best Choreography at the 2011 MTV VMAs. Not surprising considering it launched another dance move craze and hundreds of impersonations. Fact number 77. Besides being her fourth album, the title comes from four being Beyonce's lucky number. Her mother was born on January 4th, Beyonce was married on April 4th, her birthday is on September 4th, her husband's is on December 4th, a lot of her friends' birthdays are on the 4th of the month. Her daughter has four letters in her name, and her middle name, Ivy, is the Roman numeral four. So, that's a lot of fours. Fact number 78. Beyonce recorded over 60 songs this time around and tried everything she wanted. She channeled the styles of Afrobeat, Broadway, 90s R&B, and her favorite artists like Earth, Wind & Fire, DeBarge, Lionel Richie, Tina Marie, Jackson 5, New Edition, Adele, Florence and the Machine, and Prince. 
She also used the grittiness in her voice that comes off in her live performances, but not recorded in her tracks until now. Fact number 79. After the album's release, Beyonce announced to the world that she was pregnant during a live performance at the 2011 VMAs. B's pregnancy announcement earned the Guinness World Book of Records title for the moment with the most tweets per second. Fact number 80. In January of 2012, she gave birth to a daughter, Blue Ivy Carter. Blue Ivy's name was inspired by a passage from Rebecca Soltnitz's novel, A Field Guide to Getting Lost. The passage says, The world is blue at its edges and in its depths, the blue at the farthest reaches of the places where you see for miles. The blue of distance. Fact number 81. In April of 2012, Beyonce was named People Magazine's most beautiful woman. Like, ever. Wow. Fact number 82. Bay was the halftime act at the 2013 Super Bowl. Her performance was widely praised and even featured her Destiny's Child bandmates. Beyonce had performed the national anthem back in 2004, but this was her first time ruling the halftime show. And she killed it. Fact number 83. Beyonce has said that she sees music. She said, when I'm connected to something, I immediately see a visual or a series of images that are tied to a feeling or an emotion, a memory from my childhood, thoughts about life, my dreams, or my fantasies. We see your point, Bay. Fact number 84. In December of 2013, Beyonce released her new self-titled visual album with no heads up, which created a social media frenzy as well as impressive immediate sales. Beyonce, never a fan of traditional promotional tactics. So instead, she simply tweeted, surprise, to millions of her followers along with a link to the iTunes store. Fact number 85. The visual album became that year's top-selling female debut only 27 hours after its surprise launch without any promotion. Fact number 86. The record features 14 tracks, one of which is named after her daughter, Blue Ivy. Bay said, I didn't want to release my music the way I've done it. I'm bored with that. I feel like I'm able to speak directly to my fans. I just want this one to come out when it's ready and be from me to my fans. Fact number 87. Beyonce said it was difficult trying to keep the album a secret, and when filming the music video for EXO and Coney Island, she wore earbuds so the public couldn't hear the song before it was released. Fact number 88. Her nickname and title for her seventh video on the album, Yance, came from a studio session with Justin Timberlake in The Dream. They were in the studio and JT started drumming on a bucket. Yeah, a bucket. That beat you hear on the track is literally a bucket JT played. It reminded Beyonce of freestyling on lunch breaks and so they started to freestyle. And The Dream said the line, Yance on his mouth like liquor. They had no clue what that meant but she loved it and used it as one of her many new catchphrases. Fact number 89. Beyonce is the most Grammy nominated woman ever. In 2014, she was the music industry's top earning woman, taking over 115 million to the bank. Fact number 90. After her 2016 Super Bowl performance, Bay's next musical endeavor was announced, the Formation Tour. Snapchat King DJ Khaled is the opening act for the tour. Fact number 91. Beyonce has partnered with three charities for her tour, the United Way Worldwide, Chime for Change, and Global Citizen, who will have a presence during the tour. The philanthropic efforts are through her Bay Good Global Charity Initiative, which the singer launched in 2013 to accompany her Mrs. Carter World Tour. Fact number 92. Each stop of the Formation World Tour will also offer a VIP ticket contest for fans who make a small donation to United Way, which donates all proceeds to fighting the Flint water crisis. Three other locations during the tour, Houston, Compton, and Detroit, will also feature special signature events that fans can attend. Fact number 93. Beyonce's Mysterious Lemonade special was available for free upon its television debut on HBO and Cinemax on April 23, 2016. Beyonce has teamed up with HBO in the past for her 2014 concert film, On the Run Tour with Jay-Z, and her documentary, Life is But a Dream. Fact number 94. The Lemonade album was inspired by a speech Jay-Z's grandmother, Hattie White, made on her 90th birthday party. She said, I was served lemons, but I made lemonade. Fact number 95. The song All Night is the second time Beyonce has sampled the horns from Outkast's song Spotty Adi Dopalicious. The first time was for 2014's Flawless remix. Fact number 96. Beyonce's bat in the Hold Up video is branded with the words hot sauce. This is reference to a line in the song that says, I keep hot sauce in my bag swag. Fact number 97. Over 15 writers were credited for the song Hold Up. Part of the reason is because it features combined lyrics from Turn My Swag On by Soldier Boy and Maps by Yeah Yeah Yeah. Fact number 98. Beyonce has many fragrance lines, but she's actually allergic to most perfumes. The fragrances she wears have to be chemically altered to make sure she doesn't have an allergic reaction. Boss! Fact number 99. Beyonce and her mother Tina created the clothing line The House of Darien in honor of Bay's grandmother who was a seamstress. Clearly that skill was passed down to many of their family members, especially Tina Knowles. Fact number 100. 
In 2011, Beyoncé became the first ever solo female artist to headline the Glastonbury Festival's main stage. Rocket Bay. Fact number 101. In 2014, Beyoncé was named as the highest earning African American musician in history. She was ranked number one on the Forbes Celebrity 100 list. Fact number 102. Beyoncé allegedly records all of her interviews with journalists and keeps them in her own archives. That way, if there's ever any dispute over what was actually said, she has all the facts ready. You gotta do what you gotta do. Fact number 103. When Beyoncé has rare moments of downtime, one of her favorite things to do is visit local museums. She also likes to do painting and photography. Fact number 104. Beyoncé rapped the first verse of the song Partition, off the cuff, without even writing it down. She said she was embarrassed after she recorded it and was worried her mom would be mad at her. Can anyone really be mad at Bay? Fact number 105. One of Bay's favorite songs is Love Fool by The Cardigans, and her favorite rapper is Wyclef Jean. She also loves Middle Eastern music and dancing. Fact number 106. When they got married, Bay and her hubby were given a fake fur throw as a wedding gift by PETA, an organization dedicated to the ethical treatment of animals. Fact number 107. Beyonce loves her fans. In 2007, she visited two fans who got injured at her concert from a firework that got loose and went into the audience. Aww, we love you too, Bay. Beyonce and Jay-Z were listed as a power couple on Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People of 2006. 2007 was a great year for Beyonce. She was on People Magazine's list of best dressed stars as the showstopper. She was number two on Touch Magazine's top 10 best bottoms in Hollywood. And she was number five on Touch Weekly Magazine's Hollywood Beach Bums list. Hey. Everyone loves a beach gal. All right, music people, once again, I'm Lauren Mayhew, and you just finished watching Mike Drop's 107 music facts about Beyonce. Did you guys enjoy these facts? If so, make sure to subscribe because we are bringing you guys more facts about your favorite musicians every week. Also, let us know which artists we should find facts about next. See you guys next time.